Her boyfriend had gotten her mother pregnant. Teachers of Reddit, what amusing family secrets did you accidentally learn from your overly talkative students? Kudos going out to all the teachers for glossing over the home stuff they learn. My sister wrote in her daily journal in grade 1 that our parents had a shower together the night before. Teacher wrote what a great way to save water. My daughter's kindergarten teacher told me about how one child entertained them at show and tell with a complete report on the new alarm system in their house including the code and where the keypad was located behind the curtains. Here's a cute and light-hearted one, I had a girl stay for some help after school one day. At the time I was teaching geometry, 10th grade, in a mostly Hispanic school. She told me about growing up in Peru until about the age of 10 or so, I can't remember the exact age she told me. She was telling me that she worked with her uncle sometimes on the weekend. I asked what kind of work, many of our kids worked construction with their families. He's a clown dot 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 I'm his DJ. That really gave me a smile. Several years ago, I did a brief stint teaching junior high, I now teach high school. In that time, I learned a lot of information from students that, I am sure, parents would prefer I had not learned. The one that stands out the most to me was the boy who accidentally let it slip to the entire class that dad has a small pe- the bell hadn't rung to start class yet, so I was letting the kids, 7th grade, be a little crazy and get some of their pent-up energy out before we began class. I hear one boy say to another shut up, you'll always have a tiny DCK. The kid, in a moment of suicide by words, just said I've seen my dad naked. He's tiny. You're probably right. Thank God the bell rang and I was able to move the kids on to their actual lessons. Worked at an after-school program run by the YMCA. Once had a fourth grader explain to me in detail how her sister was also her cousin. Edit, they had the same dad, and their moms were sisters, so half-siblings through dad and first cousins through moms. Having a nine-year-old run new through that is quite a trip. An 11th grader was talking about how he moved back with his grandparents when his mom dies. He mentioned that his mom also attended this school and so did his dad, but he never met him. He only knew his dad's first name. So, he says the name in my get to know other students first day icebreaker. A freshman girl asked a few pointed questions, pulls out her phone and calls their dad. Dad is there within 15 minutes turns out the dead mom's family moved mom out of the city to hide the pregnancy and the dad only knew the child's first name. Dad spent years trying unsuccessfully to track his kid down. The dad settled down becomes in and gets married has three daughters, the oldest daughter was the freshman. There was a GD family reunion in my icebreaker on the first day of school. Edit, thanks for the awards everyone. Some points. The boy's mom and dad were high school students when she became pregnant. I don't think that was clear. Mom moved from, downtown major northern city, to Alabama or Louisiana to be with her, grandfathers. The boy got the, grandfather's name, not sure if it was the mom's father or grandfather. The dad would not have had the money or resources to trace the mom's movement, this would be in the pager, cassette days not cell phones and Facebook. Okay, so not a teacher but in grade 9 there was a girl who got completely plastered in the girl's bathroom. And my 14 year old self had one too many slushies at lunch, so I ran into her there. This girl's makeup was a complete mess and since I was at the peak of social anxiety problems I just tried to slip away. As usual I was too late, and this girl clung to my arm and fell apart sobbing to me about how her boyfriend had gotten her mother pregnant. I ended up missing the rest of the day to sit in the corner of the bathroom with this girl I had never met before in my life, and we never talked again. But man, I feel bad for that dysfunction family. 8th grader, excitedly, Mrs. Rosie Dokudaki, guess what I found out? My grandpa was a Nazi. Me, do you know what a Nazi is? 8th grader, no. Me. Maybe you should go talk to your mom about that. She came in the next day and went, 
Yeah, my mom told me I can't tell people about my grandpa anymore. It was my own child actually. My husband had just quit smoking and my daughter was in kindergarten had proceeded to go and tell everybody that her father had quit doing drugs. Tobacco equals drugs. I had quite a number of co-workers and parents come asking me if everything was okay at home. Used to do science programming for kids. In the middle of a library summer reading program, I picked a little girl, probably about 4-5 years old, to come up and be my volunteer for a magic trick, which the new explained the science of after it was done. I asked what her name was, she said it into the mic, zero shyness in front of approximately 200 kids and adults. I asked if she had ever heard of the trick we were going to do and she said, no. My favorite dinosaur is a triceratops. And I like your shoes. My dad is back there hi dad, but my mom couldn't come tonight because she got a shot in her butt and can't sit on the hard chairs this place has. Dad, and all the other adults in the audience, were dying. I have a kindergartner whose dad died about a year ago. She doesn't quite understand where he went so sometimes when other kids bring up their dads she talks about him. A couple times she said she misses him and says he's on a trip. Sometimes she says he's coming home tomorrow. I only met her mom once, so I don't know the situation, but I don't blame her for not knowing how to explain death to a 5 year old. Sorry I know that's sad, but I work in a low income area. I have lots of sad stories. While I taught 4th grade, I had a kid tell me that his dad works on car rims at night. Another one told my friend, the bilingual teacher, that she came back from visiting family in Mexico over the weekend by going through the river. Edited to add, another one. I taught the son of a second grade teacher. He came in one weekend talking about drinking lots of kid beer over the weekend at his dad's house. His mom stopped by later and I mentioned the story, she shook her head and said, it's apple juice, I keep telling his dad to stop calling it kid beer. Thanks for the awards. These are my very first ones. I wasn't a teacher, but I used to have a small farm with the usual farm animals. I also went to schools and brought along animals and educated the class on animal care, etc. I always invited elementary school classes to come take a tour of the farm and entertain the children. Every year the teachers took me up on the offer. At the time I also had several animals up in the house including a few squirrel monkeys. One of them was really old and she had no teeth. A young boy in the second grade was laughing and playing with that older monkey while I talked to the class that surrounded the monkey cages. The old monkey was gumming his finger and he couldn't stop laughing. Finally the little boy said, Hey Jacob, come here and let her bite you dot 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 it feels just like grandma. And while showing them the possum I was bottle feeding back to health. A little boy said he had a bunch of them in his bedroom closet. Used to teach pre-kindergarten. I had one kid who would tell me every month when her mom was on her period. Mrs. A, my mom is bleeding from her butt again. At least, I hope that is what was going on or that poor lady had some severe hemorrhoids lmao. I was walking a new student to IT and they happily shared the story of his fat cousin who is wanted by the sheriff because he's behind in his child support. The fat cousin is fat because he drinks energy drinks and not water and he doesn't pay child support because he doesn't like kids. Fat cousin also smells a bit like cheese and his feet have long toenails. And so, on and so forth until we arrived at the IT office. I once had a student explain to me that all his neighbors were mad at his dad. I asked him why, kid goes on to tell me his dad had started a fire for insurance money and lit the whole carport on fire. Many cars were lit on fire that night. Kids. My dad did this but to our house when I was a little kid. I'll give him props because he got away with it clean with no repercussions and what a a more money than that pos shack was worth. The county was widening the road and was going to use some law to basically take our house and land, not much of it, and give us a very small amount of money we'd never have been able to get anywhere but a rented apartment with. Imminent domain or something I'd. 
He went W plan B and burned that SHT down. He stored lots of rounds of ammo in there beforehand which prevented the firemen from making any attempt to put the fire out, so it burned to the ground and dad got a fat check and moved us to a much nicer normal house one of our family members hadn't cobbled together decades earlier. That was three decades ago and he's dead now, so I figured it's okay to tell the tale of his secret triumph. I sometimes wonder how much it stressed him out. I can imagine all of us sleeping and him pacing thinking how it's all on the line and no one can know that his hand was forced, and it was for his kids. He finally confessed to me and only me, I'd cry not my brothers, when I was 16. It all clicked then. I immediately knew it was true. He was legit leaving piles of oily rags and boxes of bullets everywhere for a week before it happened to ha ha. Special education teacher here. I had a student who was an absolute terror. He bullied the other students and constantly disrupted lessons. His mother was just as bad. She would routinely stop by to visit to my classroom and would sit there and give me the stank eye. Then she would go to the principal with made up stories of my inability to teach and or my bias against her son. She would call meetings with district level administrators and rail against me for hours. One day I was asking my students if they could write down their address for a class project we were doing. The terror gives me an address that is different from the one we had on record. In fact, the address was in the next town 15 miles away. He and his mother had moved 9 months earlier but had neglected to register in their new school district, as is required. I notified my principal and the next day the terror is gone. The icing on the cake was that Terror Mom was sued by our school district for the loss of funds during that 9 month period. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more quality content. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions. Goodbye.